Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This video is actually pretty important and I'm gonna to try to make it as brief as possible. There are tools that we eventually got on the AMD 6800U platform, which I've always called as auto TDP tools. And really what they're doing is they're just modulating CPU clocks and GPU clocks, sometimes only GPU clocks in specific different applications while trying to hit a specific frame rate cap. Most of the time we're trying to hit 60 FPS. The tool that I like to use a lot of times is Cypher's Auto Power Bat, and I made a YouTube short about that and I've demoed it a few different times. And you can see it in this particular video where I was using it on the INEO 2 and it was targeting 48 Hertz. In this particular situation, it's trying to modulate both CPU and GPU at the same time while trying to hit that 48 FPS. Now, it's going to do this basically, it's threading the needle of trying to give just enough CPU and just enough GPU to hit that frame rate. Now, if you're playing a game and there's a lot of dynamic scenes going on and then a big action scene happens and you're at those lower clocks, what you're gonna see is that a frame rate drop happens. And then auto TDP types of apps will spike up any particular different clock up against that. I mean, a lot of these types of tools I had, when I first looked at AMD 6800U platform, I had shown with my Fox tweaks that if we just modulated the GPU clock, we can pretty much get much better performance at lower TDPs because I was basically throwing a wrench in the works on AMD's driver and Windows Power Schema where if I just said, no, give more clock to the GPU, it had to wrestle and try to figure out how what it could do on the CPU side. After that, we saw tools like Frank's Motion Assistant tool come out first where you would just turn off turbo clocks on AMD's CPU side and then you would basically turn off all turbo clocks. You'd basically be at base clocks or lower. This was fine for most games, especially just hitting 60 FPS. And then it would also do its GPU flow type of thing where it would determine how much GPU frequency, the clock rate, it needed to hit that 60 FPS rate. Cypher wound up coming up with another tool later on, which also leveraged CPU clocks. And this could be leveraged for emulation and other things. So that is pretty much the holy grail of those types of tools where we're really trying to kind of finesse everything by looking at an, a frame rate counter saying, okay, I want to hit 60 FPS. Now figure out the CPU and GPU clocks to satisfy that 60 FPS. The end result being that even though we showed benchmarks on the Z1e not performing that great at lower TDPs at default settings, even if I did EPP 60 and set power savings and the PCIe power savings on, doing everything is better for the APU while running on battery or when plugged in specifically for the APU, we were still seeing non-ideal situations happening. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to modify CPU clocks and GPU clocks ourselves while trying to hit an FPS cap. And I'm going to show you a few different game demos where on the Asus RG Ally itself, we're going to still have the same settings and still hitting 60 FPS while getting significantly be better battery life most of the time. Sometimes we don't. And I'm going to show you a few different things of what happens when we're using these types of tools. Up first, we're gonna take a look at Hades. Now this is a game that's actually kind of difficult in so far as that many times systems will kind of spin its wheels and spend more power than it actually needs to to hit 60 FPS. If we look on the left-hand side, that is our default Asus RG Ally. And on the right-hand side is where we're modifying clocks ourselves. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this video because I want you to take a look at the core clocks that are slowly going down on the modulated side on the right side. You can see that it's ever slowly just keeps on lowering CPU clocks because we're still hitting 60 FPS. The end result being that even though it's kind of self-modulating, take a look at the total system power between default and the modulated. We're using 20 watt total system power on the left and 10 on the right. This means on the left you'd get two hours of battery life and on the right you'd get four hours of battery life. You are doubling the amount of battery life that you get and having the same settings and same 60 FPS experience. That's actually really huge. Next up, we're gonna be taking a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And this is another game where you can really see the difference in clocks. Take a look at those CPU core clocks. They're absolutely insanely low. Zen 4 is a monster and able to actually still hit 60 FPS and even a GPU core clocks of eight, 880 megahertz. And we're still just fine. And you take a look at the difference in power. Once again, we're almost that 2X amount, basically getting about 80% more battery life just by modulating CPU and GPU clocks. This next game we're gonna take a look at is Proteus. Now this is a specific example that I wanna show you here. This is when we're just modulating GPU clocks alone and we just kind of statically clock the CPU clocks. Right here you can see, as soon as I get into some actions, my frame rate goes down to 43 FPS. But take a look at the GPU clock, what happens? It immediately bumps up to 1.4 gigahertz and then 1.7 gigahertz. It's trying to automatically, very rapidly, trying to self-regulate to get us back to 60 FPS. Now in this particular situation, I have 
not allowed CPU clocks to be adjusted here. So we're just doing GPU clocks alone, but I wanted to highlight what is actually happening here when how fast and how rapid the application will actually self-modulate when it notices that, oh, we didn't, we're, we're below our tar target rate. We have to start bumping clocks to get back into a good zone. So when we go back to this, what you're gonna find out is what we really need here is more CPU clocks. And by me just statically setting the CPU clocks as they are, it's not an ideal situation. Technically, we don't need more GPU here. We just need a little bit more CPU. This could be a better situation by having just a bit more CPU and less GPU for sure. Next up, we're gonna be taking a look at Doom Eternal. Now, once again, all of these settings are exactly the same and I'm trying to recreate the scene as best I can like running through it. The thing here is that I've once again capped the CPU core clocks, but the only thing that we're modulating is the GPU core clocks. And you can see that we're not making those big swings like we were in Proteus because Proteus was way under its 60 FPS cap, whereas, uh, Doom Eternal isn't. So we're just seeing these micro bumps up. But even if we take a look at total system power differences, we're looking at 42 watt total on the default side versus 29 watt on the right side. So still a significant power savings by doing this. One other thing that I really want to kind of point out here is just the massive difference in terms of temperature difference that's on the device itself. At one side, on the left-hand side, you're actually going to hear the fan. It'll be quite audible. But on the right side, it's actually going to be far more silent even though we have the exact same settings and same frame rate. The reason I showed dead cells in this particular test was I wanted to demonstrate to you that there are gonna be instances where auto, T auto TDP like tools aren't gonna be a miracle solve for everything. There are gonna be situations where by default, the system's already doing a good enough job. So that's good, but also just kind of have that in your mind. Also note that all the games that I ran in this these particular tests were at 720p and trying to hit 60 FPS. Naturally, if you're going to 1080p and trying to hit 60 FPS, you're going to be spending more power. So you're not going to be able to achieve the same type of results. You may be able to save a little bit of power, but not as much as we were able to do at 720p. Likewise, if you want to go over 60 FPS, power isn't linear. So you're going to be spent, it's hockey stick growth for these types of things. This is why one of the first videos I did on the Asus ROG Ally was basically saying, no one is going to be hitting 1080p 120. Even 720p 120 is a difficult task for these types of APUs. So these are tall orders, but anywhere from 720p and 40 to 60 FPS are the sweet spot for these particular devices. They are incredibly efficient. And when we leverage these types of auto TDP tools, where we basically take control of things ourselves and we don't care if Asus or AMD fix the situation, we'll do it ourselves. So I wanted to show you that we still have the power to achieve better here. Now, ultimately, what I would love is that if Asus ROG, uh, Asus, in Armory Crate had these auto TDP like functionality built into Armory Crate itself, that would be sick. That would be sweet if they did that because just having it pre-installed pre makes it easy without having to download other third-party tools. So that's something that I really wish could happen. I don't know if it's a possibility, but I do know that third-party uh, developers will obviously make this happen on the Asus ROG Ally. So just wanted to show you that there's good news even when we're trying to be efficient with the chip because the system can overspend. And this is a little bit of a defeat that we have to accept. And it's not even that the Asus RG Ally was the only device that shows this. There was a lot of 6800U devices that had the same thing, which is why the auto TDP apps came out there, which is why when I first uh, did benchmarks on 6800U and I showed the Fox tweaks, how that all was getting better. So this is kind of a whole development and process. And uh, basically we just take things into our own hands and make things better. That's it for me, guys. Hopefully this has been informative. As always, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.